Hello crafty friends, welcome to a Vicki Booten Design Team Mixed Media Layout for Halloween. And I'm showing you how I painted the cut file and I'm using the water brush dipped in the Vicki Booten paints to create the splatters around the outside edge of the web. I'm adding water with a water brush and dabbing the paint inside the bottle just to create a watered down enough, the paint that's watered down enough to make the splatters around the outside edge of the web. So I'm adding quite a bit of water just so that it will have enough fluidity to be able to splatter really easy. So I create the, I squeeze the water brush and create the large dots first, and then I tap the end of the brush to create the small splatters. So I want it to be an even amount of mixed media around the outside edge of the web. So I'm tapping and tapping until I get an even amount. And since we had squeezed out quite a bit of water into the colored paint, we'll have enough to create quite a few tiny splatters. And the water brush is an easy way to add the mixed media to your layout in a specific area if you want to use it as a design element. That's what I usually tend to do. Now that we've done the saltwater taffy to coordinate, I'm going to use a mix of, it's about 50-50 mix of red and orange to create the color, coral color, the coral color at the top here. So I wanted to add some more of the tiny splatters because it wasn't an even amount. So I'm just tapping it, getting the little tiny splatters and I'll have to add some more of the light orange. So I just watered down the orange more to get the lighter orange color over here. You can see I'm just going in the orange section a little bit more. We're going to create the tiny splatters in this area. And I just sewed the cut file from Paige Evans before I let that dry, before I painted over with it with the Vicky Boot and paints. And I didn't want the paint to go on evenly, so I purposely watered down some of the areas so it'd have a varied look on this spider's web. So now we're moving on to the punched paper pumpkins. I created these with a Fiskars punch. It's a hot air balloon punch, but I like to try to see if I can use my supplies in ways other than they were intended. So I kind of get double duty out of this hot air balloon punch and create some pumpkins with it. So the little basket, the hanging basket that's attached to the hot air balloon, I punched it out of the black and white script paper from the Vicky Boone All the Good Things collection. And I'm showing you, I created some of these, most of these off camera, and I'm just doing the last ones. So you can see I'm trimming away. I placed the little hanging basket at the top, glued that, and then once that's dry, I trim away. I cut even so it creates like a stem and just trim away some part of the punch. And I'm going to do this one on camera, so you'll see how I do the layer. That's the full hot air balloon punch. So I glue it first, and then since I can see where the other layers are, it's easier to trim the back layer. So we're going to let this, I just put a line of glue down the, down the center, and that's the only place they're adhered so that I can fold them up and they look like a honeycomb. We're going to let this dry before we try to trim it because if we try to trim it with the glue has not grabbed, it's going to fall apart. So this is the Willow Ling 6x8 paper pad from by Crate Paper, the Willow Ling collection. I created some of these at the bottom from the purple paper in that collection and the bottom turquoise are also from the Willow Lane. This is from the Vicky Boot and All the Good Things collection paper pad and the rest of them are all made with the field notes. Vicky Button Field Notes. Now we have all the pumpkins that we're going to put on the page. I'm going to let that one dry before I trim it. And we're going to move on to the next stage of the layout. So now you can see the second cut file I used on the page is this black and white script paper like I said from the All the Good Things collection by Vicki Booten. I'm peeling it off the Silhouette cutting mat. And then this is a background back cut file by Paige Evans, but I am going to cut these apart. I sized it down. It was originally a full 12 by 12 size, but I sized it down to about five inches because I want this cut file to be the embellishment part of the page. So I'll cut these bats all apart, and because I created an outline shadow of the cut file, the little ears disappeared. So I'll just cut a little triangle out of the top of the bats to create that. 
right there. See, I'm just cutting a little bit of a triangle to create the ears again. Because I had created a trace in outer, the outer edge on the Silhouette Design Studio, it uh, kind of didn't have room to make the ears, but that, that's because I made the file so small. So if you, it, the original file from Paige has the ears on it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna trim each of these apart and create a lot of black and white patterns on the page. So I'm going to use five of these. I like to use odd numbers. So I'm going to use five of the black with white script bats. And then you'll see how I'm going to create the white with black pattern. I'm cutting these apart, but I'm realizing that I just want five. So I'll go ahead and cut some of these apart. And I have to create the little ears there. Just a tiny notch. There we go. And then I'm going to move the rest of these to the side. Once I have the five that I would like to use. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're going to move on to the stamped pattern that I created with the Vicki Booten Field Notes stamp. It's the Explore set, stamp and die set. And... What am I doing? I'm trying to find, oh, yeah, I can't find my acrylic blocks. But here's the Field Notes stamp and die set. I'm using VersaFine. And we're going to put this, yeah, <laughs> I'm using the lid to a Sizzix die. <laughs> but you know, use what you got. So I'm just, this little tiny triangle stamp makes it really easy to make a continuous pattern. So you can see how the edges are lined up to create. You just keep going to the left and you'll create a continuous pattern. I just wanna make sure I have enough stamping to cover the bats. So I'm going to trace around this cut file on the back of the stamped piece so that I can get the bats at the same size and I cut them apart so I don't wanna go cut another cut file. So I'll just make my own pattern paper here with the Vicky Bitten stamps. Now we're going to use the dashes to create another pattern. So I'll end up with like three black and white patterns here. And I'll use some of the larger bats and the smaller bats. I'm just making sure again that I have enough stamped area to cover. So now we're going to use the dot, the like Dalmatian dots there, right there. And I'm going to stamp it in sort of a bat shape, just so that I know the bat will be covered with the pattern. And that's pretty easy to just line it up there to create a continuous pattern. And now I'm going to, oh, I went to get a pencil. I'm going to use a pencil on the back so that I don't have to erase. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm over the pattern and trace around the cut file with the pencil and I believe I'm going to use four of these. So that means there'll be nine bats as embellishments on the page. You can see this is pretty simple. It's a simple shape, so it'll be easy to fussy cut and e easy to trace. So that's the one out of the dashed paper. And then we're going to cut two out of the, see two little bats fit on that dotted pattern. And these are the smaller bats. So we're just tracing. I think I turned it over so they would be facing the other way. So that's a good thing about tracing. You can flip one over so that they're not all exactly the same. Some are flying one way and some are flying the other way. So here we're going to fussy cut these with American Crafts detail scissors. And these are really great scissors for detail work and fussy cutting. So I'm just going to go about cutting these out. You can see there's also the spiders in the top left of the camera shot. Those also came with the spiders web from Paige Evans and I wanted to add those to my page but it kind of ran out of room because I added quite a few bats so I am going to use them on another project. Here you can see how it's going to come together and I'll mix in the different patterns of the black and white bats throughout the page and they're going to kind of go in a diagonal across through the photo to lead your eye across the page to create some movement on the page as well. There we go, see? So we've got three patterns. We've got the triangle, the dash, and the dot. I'm going to cut these two out of the dot and then we're going to be done. 
And we can go on with the layout now. Funny story, my daughter wanted to, uh, there we go. See, it's coming together. I'm going to move everything. Uh, yeah, I was going to tell you story, squirrel mama. So my daughter, it's the first time we've decorated the outside of the house for Halloween in like a decade. So my daughter had the fun idea that we could go shopping together and then we decorated ourselves. I got up on the ladder and was like hugging the, it doesn't look like it's that high in the photo, but it's pretty high. So <laughs> hugging the column, our neighbors probably think, what is that goofy lady doing? It was at the top of the ladder anyway, the stuff you do for your kids, you know? <laughs> So now we're going to take the thickers from the All the Good Things collection by Vicki Booten and we're going to create a wonky title and it's going to be at the bottom right and I want to make sure that it's not straight because to me Halloween says wonky. I don't know. So we're going to add the title and just kind of it's going to meander up and down at the bottom right of the page and you kind of see the bats lead to the title so the photo is going to go you'll see where I place the photo next here we go now this black and white dashed pattern that I stamped I also made the photo mat out of and I'm going to add vellum behind this this is a just scrap vellum I had cut out a lot of the you see the Vicki Booten field notes dies are cut out of this vellum And I made pencil marks so that I know how large to make the vellum. And there we go. So I've got a double layer just to make this photo stand out a little bit on the page. You can see it's starting to come together. So all I have to do is move a few of the punched pumpkins, move some of the bats to the top left a little bit more just so that I can fit my photo on here. You can see one of the bats I've put in the middle of the pumpkin just to kind of continue your eye across the page. So I'm just figuring out where can I place this? Is this looking okay? Oh, I have this cute photo of my pet. He's like my little mascot and he's already got his Halloween costume on. He's got an NHL Golden Knights hockey jersey on and a little spider on his collar. So I'm trying to decide, do I want to switch photos? But the decorations on the outside of the house are spiders and bats. So I feel like it goes better with this, The what I envisioned for the page. So I'll just have to make another page for a cute little Chewy. So I'm moving the pumpkins around and I am moving the spider web around just to make sure I have a pleasing arrangement and the pumpkins are kind of centered over the spider's web and the colors that like orange over the orange and pink over the pink you get the idea. So I decide that I want to trim down the photo to resemble an Instax print so it'll be tall and skinny. I didn't measure I just cut it down. So then I'm going to have to trim my photo mat, obviously. Obvi. And I'm going to go back and trim that to fit with the new cropped photo. And you can see the spiders on the outside of the house there in the photo. And they're purple, which is used to be a color I didn't really like, but now I kind of like it. So I kind of like it. <laughs> Who does that sound like? <laughs> Oh gosh. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. I'm going to use just hand trim these, the vellum, to go behind that. There we go. So now we have, I'm going to move everything again. And I think that just this smaller and skinnier photo just kind of fits better with the page. And you can see, still see all the focal points in the photo so I didn't really cut out any essential parts of the photo. So there I'm going to move everything around again. I have to put the pumpkins back on top because I kind of want the pumpkins on top of the photo. I like to add lots of layers. So we have the background mixed media layer. You have, layer, you have the painted pumpkin layer, die cut, uh, cut file. I mean what am I saying? The painted spiders web. Then you have the paper punched pumpkins, then you have the bats and the photo and the photo mats. So there's quite a few layers on the page. And you know, this is coming together. This is basically how it's going to look in the end. I'm just making sure that's actually in the center because I don't want it off center since there's not that much on the page. So I'm going to use a T square 
and I know that I don't want the pumpkins in a straight line. I kind of want them wonky in the middle. And now I'm going to use the T-square to create some pencil lines for the journaling. I do the journaling off camera. If you, the Vicki Booten Mixed Media community on Facebook is a really great place to join and share. So if, if you want to see some more projects with mixed media, that's a great place. And she also has Friday Night Lives. So I re really appreciate you taking the time to join me and watch this mixed media Halloween layout. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. And here's the finished photos where you see the journaling and the accents I added on the page. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.